So we just landed here in Uganda. We arrived yesterday. We checked into this hotel just to kind of catch our breath in between the South African safari and now here in Uganda we're going to be driving for nine hours today to Bwindi Forest where we'll be staying overnight just at the base of the mountain uh, near where we're going to get our permits to go gorilla trekking. Logistically a little difficult and also not very budget friendly but it's a once in a lifetime chance to spend some time with these incredible creatures. This is going to be a little bit draining so we're happy that we stayed here for one night on the shores of Lake Victoria which by the way is the second largest lake in the entire world after Lake Superior. As you can tell at sunrise right now we're gonna grab some breakfast we're gonna be meeting up with our tour guide. Yeah I'm mostly driving today but I'm excited to drive through some of Uganda maybe see some of the more rural areas and see what the day brings. Drive. Bumpy. But yeah, very bumpy, especially at the end there. Just driving through the hills and the villages. There's a lot of like that sort of thing happening. It's good, fun, exciting, adventure. We just got here after driving for 10 hours. Um, we have this awesome room with this amazing view in the middle of the rainforest. They gave us some popcorn, some water, and like drinks if we wanted them. This is great. Just taking a moment to take it all in. Having dinner by candlelight, and we got a little fire going right over next to us here. Super cute. I understand why that movie was called Gorillas in the Mist. That looks a little intimidating. <laughs> How are we going to find them? As I understand it, our tracker has actually not yet found the family. So we're heading out in a general direction. Trek. They still haven't found the gorilla family that we're assigned to, so we're gonna get updates as we go. We're with trackers, we're with guides, we're with armed guards. We've had a full briefing, really cute walking stairs. And yeah, let's see. This is very thick. And I think this is still like this is still a trail, but we're gonna go off road in. Our guide has a machete. He's threatening to use it. He will use this. Oh, this is beautiful. I think I already have somebody in my shoe. Oh. <laughs> that didn't last long. Trying to film. And not fall. 
No, I'm trying to film myself. <laughs> the suction that you feel as you lift your leg from a, a muddy pit is probably the scariest part of gorilla trekking so far. Let's see him. How'd you do? Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I did less good. For those counting, I have fallen three times. So we've been walking for a little under an hour before we got the call that the gorillas were found. Uh, they were expected to be closer to the location that we were walking to, which is why we were walking in that general direction. But it turns out that they're further up in elevation. So now we're walking away from the super muddy areas, gaining some elevation, so it's a lot steeper. But all in all, good news. We are gonna see gorillas today. As it turns out, not seeing them was an option. One of the surprising elements of this hike is that there's actually quite a bit of uh, elephants or signs or signs of elephants. We haven't actually seen any elephants yet. We've seen plenty of uh, scat and places that they might uh, hang out at, like little nooks. Well, rather large nooks, I guess, for elephants. Sometimes the elephants come and wallow. So when those guys are directing us, they say, when you reach where elephants normally swim, then there you turn on this, in this direction, turn on this direction. We have to keep it low because we're in the vicinity of gorillas. Oh, I want some of that. Hold on, I'm gonna get some water. This is probably the most exciting part of the entire trek so far. You just know that they're close. The forest is so thick, I can't really see what's happening up ahead, but sometimes we stop and I just try to study everybody else's face to see if they're excited. I think we're calling the tracker right now, though. Oh my god. Holy shit. There were several other groups out trekking that day, but each was given a different gorilla family to seek out. Some are found within 30 minutes, others take all day. And sometimes they're not even found at all. We considered ourselves lucky that it took us about three hours to find our assigned gorilla family. But all trekking groups are only allowed to spend one hour with the gorillas to avoid too much disruption to their way of life. The timer started the moment we saw the silverback up in the tree. On your feet. On your feet, Ofer. On your feet. Next time, step back. And step back, Ofer. <laughs> Mountain gorillas share DNA with humans, so we wear masks while we're in close proximity to them to keep them safe from any transmissible viruses they could catch. We saw two when we first got to this area. And now here's another two, three, four, maybe six, including some babies. You may have seen gorillas at the zoo, but they were undoubtedly lowland gorillas. These are mountain gorillas. And although attempts have been made, mountain gorillas don't survive in captivity. 
Here in the wild, they live in tight-knit family groups, and it's beautiful to see the way they interact with one another. Feisty teenagers, curious toddlers, exhausted mothers, and even grandma napping in the corner. The whole group is led by one alpha male, the silverback. We did it. We did it. Oh my god, that was amazing. That silver back at the end. Oh, so cool. It was huge. I didn't know like how cool this would be, but when they're just hanging out and they're just you can kind of feel like you're part of the pack. I mean, yeah, you're sitting around with a camera the whole time, but don't sit. Good lesson. This is scary. <laughs> I'm gonna try this. And I need to not fall. Because I have all the camera equipment. Woo! If my back wasn't tense I did it. before. I didn't fall in the water. Yeah, it did. Oh, there's not another river. I mean, you can't tell me that's not a river. Just, just the wood being so slippery. Yeah. And like, because it's like, sort of like rotting. So every step you take, you're just like, I don't know if this is gonna hold. Not to mention, I've already fallen six times uh, just stepping on like branches. So they're saying that there's another section with another river and another crossing. I refuse to believe it. <laughs> Rapids. Apparently there's a log down somewhere. We're gonna look for the log. Another log crossing. I stand corrected. The suction on your shoes is not the scariest part about this hike. It has been surpassed by being potentially attacked by gorillas and having to cross the river twice on a rotting log. There's also well, ants that might crawl up your pants and sting you yeah. in your nether region. Yeah, no one, no one wants so that. So far we haven't had that though. Yeah, it's an adventure. We did it. The trail ends right there. We crossed two bridges. I fell eight times. How many kilometers? Oh yeah. We did check how many kilometers. Six and a half miles, which is... Six and a half, that's about 11 kilometers. Walking. <laughs> Not walking. Falling. Hiking. Fall, yeah. Oh, so let me tell you, flights climbed, like flights of stairs climbed, 61. <laughs> but it was great, highly recommended. Well done. Good job, Emma. Well worth it. Wow. I can't believe I did that. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe to see us next time as we continue exploring Uganda and seek out chimpanzees. We don't see any gorillas today. What is this video gonna be about? Oh, <laughs>